when I was in Finland, I, I saw a dream, really brutal, brutal dream. We were fighting, and in that dream, it was me who got shot. It's like laying on the ground trying to breathe, and I hear this combat going around me. And then it's my friends who uh, come to me. There was Marcelo. Look, man, we can't get you out. Hold strong, you know? It felt like it lasted four hours. My comrades died in that battle, I would have never have been able to leave ever again. I could not just lead someone to his death and then wash my hand of it and go back to a normal life. That's how I felt. I worked hard, I was making good money, I had everything I wanted, but it just wasn't enough. I didn't feel like I had a purpose at all. It, everything I did felt meaningless, so I wanted to do something different. I've always wanted to do something good, change the world somehow. I think a lot of people want to do that. Moi, c'était le seul parmi tous les, les camarades qui n'avait jamais pris une arme de sa vie. Et après, quand on a commencé à tirer, j'ai passé un, une journée entière à, à penser, à dire oh, « qu'est-ce qu que je suis en train de faire ?» Malheureusement, maintenant, il n'y a, a pas une, une autre solution. Il faut prendre les armes. The end of 2015, working fast food basically, kind of a dull job. Just being stuck in the same neighborhood doing the same thing is what drives me nuts. If I'm just stuck doing the same thing, learning absolutely nothing day in and day out, I just feel like my brain's rotting. This is my chance, you know, like stand up for, you know, stand up for democracy, human rights. This is probably the most like uh, significant political revolutions in, since the Spanish Civil War. I want to go to the stadium and get a jersey from the uh, Raqqa football team. A jersey, you know, the uh, tricot. 
of Dark. No, of Rucker, man, of the Rucker team. They have a football stadium. There is no Rucker team, man. What the fuck are you talking about? Which Rucker team, man? Which one? Kilafa Football Club? Do you think they played soccer any time recently? It's haram. You can't play soccer. You can't play You can only cut heads and, and play soccer with them. That's not haram. The thing is, though, this is a two-floor mosque. The mosque is huge. Use the ftili on the door of the mosque and on the small room where the... Um, what's fucking called? Mufti? The guy who speaks on the microphone. Imam? Imam? Oh, he has a name. Uh, Muazin. Yeah, whatever. We can use it on the room where the Muazin is. Throw it there. That's it. Aftiri will not work in a room that big. I don't think there is a mine, actually, since we saw light in it. Unless there was the lights of the sabotage guy putting the mine right there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very likely that the mosque is occupied either by civilian or Daesh. I think civilians don't shoot whatever it moves, see if they have something in their hands, like a gun. And see, of course, how they move, because if they start moving like sneaky and shit, they most likely is Daesh and not civilians. Civilians, they don't try to move sneaky at night. Just try to get the fuck out of the way. 5.30, everyone ready with the equipment, everything. Welat is gonna come and bring the V-string. Uh, Robin, uh, how are you? Because I saw you destroyed today. You good? So, all right, guys, how about first? Spanish Civil War inspired me immensely, but I don't like to compare the two things because uh, if we do, we come out of it in pieces. If we compare the Spanish Civil War, Unfortunately, Daesh is more comparable to it, numerically speaking, than us. And small numbers are explained in a simple notion. Uh, the socialist movement the, around the world are weak, separated, uh, unable uh, to organize themselves effectively. They lack real motivation to, to come here and pick up arms. They're not needed. These revolutions don't need the international brigades. We need this revolution. Try now? Yeah. <laughs> Something happens, you guys. You should run quick. Well, you know. I just felt like if I went here and I fought the dash, maybe that could be my way of doing something good for once. It took a lot of courage because, you know, it's war and there's death and it's not a happy thing. Some people here don't tell their families, but for me it was extremely important that I, I would be honest. Yeah, it's, uh, there's also this kind of arrogance to it, in my opinion, not telling them because then you expect to survive. But I have to be honest to myself and to, to everyone else that there is a real possibility that uh, I won't. I've accepted that, and uh, yeah, that's what I told them.
it. That's all. Yeah. It's a car. Uh, the road we need to take, there's a suspicious vehicle in front, so we're going to send two people. Come on, let's go, let's go. Watch the wires in front of you, too. Ready? Oh, fuck. Can't hear. I think they've missed the car. So they're getting a second rocket ready to fire. Got another rocket for you. It's all right, man. You're gonna have to grab the rocket out of my bag. Okay, do it again. Take your time. Be calm, all right? Don't worry about it. Just go. Come on. Ready, Willa? We're covering you. So take your time. Aim. Are you ready? All right, I'm gonna glare. A lot. Back inside. Inside, a lot. Yeah, inside. Flare. 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 End up, move back. My job is to lead the clearing team. My team moves into a new building, breaches it with explosives, clears the mines with explosives, and uh, then. Uh, Guys, right, Needless to say, it's a very dangerous job. for four guys to go upstairs, okay? No need that whatsoever, because you just, if you find a mine, you're just gonna kill all yourselves. It was dangerous what just happened, all right? So leave always one guy downstairs. But let's focus, we have a mission, okay? And we don't want to get hurt. He saw this thing like a cylinder shape with a blinking red light and wheels under it. It's like, <laughs> I was like, get the fuck out of that <laughs> shit, man. Boom! Me and Guevara look at each other like, <laughs> then he starts screaming, ah, exploded! But like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> Take off half of the neighborhood. <laughs> 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 
I don't know, man. But I'm, the I thing think, is that it's kind of like, <laughs> now when you have to start thinking that they have those in here, and it, I mean, yeah, we already saw it, that they have, it's the freaking so thing is right there, so they might have more of those. Ariel, you look like you crawled out of a coal mine. No, uh, no, these guys I, always looking like that. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even wash your hands. God damn. Oh, well, it's just like phosphorus. But yeah, it's, it's good for the bones actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no way. Really? Yeah. Rocco is a crazy place. <laughs> well, I can leave this place. I can go back to an easy life. This is a uh, temporary. The the thing about war is though is. Uh, of course, it's a horrible thing, but uh, you can discover a lot about yourself. Uh, you can discover that you are that you are brave, that you can function in dangerous dangerous situations, that uh, that you care deeply about your friends. You share there's a, there's a, a next level of uh, comradeship, uh, next level of friendship. Like it's. Uh, those are the, those are the horrible to say, but beautiful things in the war. What? Is it very hot in there? Baltimore? Yeah. It gets hot in Baltimore when you have to run away from the 5-0. <laughs> <laughs> my, my neighborhood's not like that. It's actually pretty gentrified nowadays. Were really gentrified. It wasn't like gangs and stuff. It was just like you know, bars everywhere, junkies and prostitutes walking everywhere and stuff. Or like gangs and stuff. Is that like a term for what? like white trash? What? Like I've heard uh, white trash, honky, white bitch, cracker, um, polar bear for a fat white guy. I think that one's hilarious. Polar bear. bear. <laughs> and they called you all that. What? No, I'm, 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 I wouldn't call okay. poor bear, but I've heard it before. <coughs> oh. What did you call him? So? Funky ass bitch. What do you like? I'm going to college for all these folks, but I just couldn't really mesh in. I was kind of a working class guy, and a lot of the kids, you know, from like well suburbs and whatnot, they they'd have certain attitudes around me, a little bit classist, I guess you could say. <laughs> Folks just, you know, said dedicated progressives and so forth. You know, at the same time, they'd act like really snooty towards me because I was I just play trash. You know, it's like I don't really I don't really fit in with that circle either. You know, I, it's like a real joy just to be here to witness. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm here. To, we're, we're, we're participating in history. You know, I'm just, I'm just proud to, I'm just proud to be a witness to what I've seen here. With the, the guys, the, all, all the awesome guys I'm with here. It's warm here. You know, people are friendly. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's a great learning experience uh, for me. Uh, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like. Uh, This is Syria. <laughs> All right, guys, get out. طقبات فرحات في الشراجم غطيو الشراجم كلهم غطيوهم طقبوا الحيط طقبوا الحيط وشوفوا الطقبة في الحيط واحد اثنين ثلاثة فهمت علي؟ تمام يلا يلا وحطوا حرس كمان في الباب وكمان سكروا الباب تمام اي طفيو الضوء سمعوا عليا I'm going to see if 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 I'
and you see the big three-story building uh, on the right side. Now it's being lit, lit up by light. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Yeah. See it on the south side. On the south side, what you see? I saw move. I saw move like shadows moving in there. In the window. Yes. Oh, I can see one guy on the roof actually there. Yeah, one minute. I I I I turned down the radio, man. How about the Dikari do better? Come on, I'm welcome. So good. What do you think, man? Huh? What do you think? Well, I think it's shit. Yeah. If it's not a good building, you know, I persist. Yeah. It's ours. They fucking airstrike everything, man. All fucking... Yeah. Remember the tall house we took? With the roof that was shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, they told us, like, uh, if we're not tired, you know, we can uh, go there. Uh, rest until tomorrow 8 o'clock and then we, we enter up uh, data mob. What sort of data mob? What are we talking about? Like uh, pushing during Yeah, data? pushing. We can like uh, leave Guevara, do the sniper work and so forth, you know. What do you guys say? What time is it now? Three? 3.16. Ariel, yeah. you have the art of sight with you. Yeah. So we're ready, guys. We have the SPD and everything. We're staying at daytime. All right. We rest tomorrow, 8 o'clock in the morning, we push. All right, Guevara, you need another one, actually, not me, to be your, uh, your second. Guevara, are you OK with Hando? Yeah. All right. Come from Scotland. I was in the British Army for five years. I want to make a difference. I want to help the modern world stop terrorism. So I thought, because of what I've learned from the army and my medical skills, I'd be useful here. I don't make anything here. I get free cigarettes, but I don't smoke. I think I'll have like two hours sleep. I noticed back home everyone posted stuff on Facebook saying oh, this and that about this. Nobody actually ever did anything. I first thought it was just going to be a lot of ex-military who wanted to fight against ISIS. I didn't realise there were people here for a revolution. I had no idea about it. I never researched it at all. They really respected them because they didn't have any military training that's really needed out here. Le plus important, c'est la réaction pour ma mère et ma soeur, parce que pour moi, c'est deux personnes les plus importantes dans ma vie. Et elles savent que je suis ici, mais elles ne savent pas que je suis en train de me battre. Moi, je, je suis très attaché à la, à la non-violence, à la prévention de la violence, parce que bah, aussi au niveau personnel, j'ai grandi en Amérique centrale. Et ma mère, elle, elle pensait exactement dans ça, prévention de la violence dans la jeunesse. Donc pour moi vraiment le fait de prendre les armes c'était un peu c'était un peu difficile. J'aime pas du tout le, ce fétichisme des armes. 
les gens qui, qui prennent les, les armes avec, comme si c'était une extension de leur, de leur pénis. Oh, c'est... Non, c'est... Regarde cette M M M16. Oh. Et je me suis retrouvé dans une situation différente avec des gens qui ont des, des mentalités, des idéologies très diverses, différentes, mais un respect. Un respect très important pour, pour, pour les côtés armés, mais aussi pour la révolution, pour les camarades. Donc ce n'était pas vraiment facile pour moi de prendre cette décision. Ce bataillon est mixte. Et j'ai gardé le mix pour une raison. Half of the comrades here are actually socialists, communists, anarchists. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of discussions among each other. Nobody's getting out of this battalion untouched by that. Uh, everybody is growing politically. Why we have the big crisis now with Italian movies? You know why? Before Italy, we had like a great cinematography, enormously good, okay? Like amazingly good. And it was mostly talking about the working class, talking about uh, people who were like poor, comedies about poor people. And now they're trying to make movies like United States makes them. You know, they talk about like rich people. The main culture of Germany is still held by Hollywood, it's still held by the United States in general. Now it's becoming more and more multipolar because you have Bollywood becoming popular. In Africa you have Nollywood, not, not Nigerian film and whatnot. Bollywood is all be serious and everybody knows. The main message is the same, you know, the rich guy is beautiful, he has a lot of money, he has a good suit, he has a good car. That's, that's the main message that they're sending, you know, it's a capitalist one. And then you have Daesh propaganda. They're trying to, like, destroy that kind of world. Wait. And all of a sudden, the message is not anymore about uh, the main rich guy who is enjoying uh, his richness, who is living his drama or made of love story or whatever bullshit. Uh, all of a sudden, the story is about a fighter. But you're building an identity just on a confrontation and on a reaction to uh, this uh, Western popular culture, and I think that's pretty poor. You cannot be a reaction or, or, or answering to the already established uh, popular... You try to You're not to... the target of their propaganda. I am, for example, the target of their propaganda. Like, I'm half uh, Moroccan. My father is Italian, in a way, to the propaganda they make. So I, I see what that propaganda does. And one of the main reasons socialism is shit everywhere and now it's almost gone is because we don't talk anymore to the working class we don't talk anymore to the to the to the real people to the main people and now we're for all... example have you seen soy cuba the movie talks about the revolution but god damn it so you could say it's propaganda but it's like another level the, 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 the narrative the the acting the techniques they use the traveling the, everything and that's, that's why I believe in that. For me, I'm against everything that is elitarian in this kind of sense, because for me it's useless. You know, I don't need to speak with people that already think the same as I think, you know. Like, that's what we do as socialists. Around the world, as artists, we speak with people that are already like-minded and we keep speaking to each other, and the rest of the world is going on, and we are like on another way, and then we wonder, how the fuck did we got yeah. so much disattached from the rest? How the fuck did that happen? I made like this artistic thing, it's great, man. Why nobody actually appreciated? But nobody appreciated because you didn't give them the time to get there. You didn't, you didn't build for them a road to get there. You went on your own, you know? No, they don't have the instrument to read whatever you have there. I want to speak to the people. I come from a working class uh, background. My mother still works as a servant, basically. And uh, it's really a very humiliating work. Uh, and I grew up uh, watching her breaking her back and uh, doing that work. And when I was in middle school, I felt ashamed of my belongings. Until I felt like, uh, getting in touch more and more with socialist idea, with socialist books first, Orwell, and then I went farther up. And I started to realize that uh, there was no shame first in it. And 
I started to understand how the society works, how the capitalist system works, how the system I was belonging to works, how school works. That's how I grew up, and I, and I was lucky because, yeah, it could have been different. I could have kept that anger, and I could have had directed that anger toward the same oppressor, but with ideas that oppress even more, which are the jihadi mentality. Jihadi mentality is a form of rebellion. When uh, the main propaganda, the main cultural production portrays you in a negative way, you go around looking for a positive way to look at yourself, you know? And that's what Daesh offers. Of course, it's life full of danger, death and martyrdom and blah, blah, but that's the main message. They're literally using the weaknesses of our society against us, you know? We, we created those outcasts. There's a massive fire there, it's like thick black smoke. Holy shit, I think they hit like fuel or shit like that. How are you supposed to work in those conditions, man? It's burning now, I can't see shit. Do I think these, uh, these, these dash niggas shot with a mortar? Oh my god. I think they're shooting, uh, they're shooting straight from, uh, from that direction down the road. Oh, right, right. Have you got eyes on that way? Hmm? Have you got eyes on that side? No, I just see the place that's, that's getting shot at. Got it. Dash would have seen us making the holes, and I don't think they've got snipers in this area, so they've tried to use mortars or some sort of artillery to hit our position. No, set them set up. It's probably going to be like this till night at night, just sitting still, looking through a scope. Bored. Everyone wants to be a sniper until they realise uh, what you actually do. Yes. What was that? 
fucking staircase is gone. Is it? Yeah. Right, well, yeah. I think it's horrible and just explode outside him. The last like five minutes of power to power starting and raining. The guys downstairs are probably pretty much more fucked than we are. After that, we were doing that operation, witnessed a um, horrifying death of what is resulting from a too stupid mistake that a, an SDF, SDF fighter did. Um, shot with an RPG, grievous, horrible injuries. For two hours, I managed to keep him alive, but at the end, he, he uh, expired. Sometimes you have those, those slight moments where you think that it's gonna happen to me. That uh, the only way out of this godforsaken city is by getting injured or dying. And, but you just have to push that out of the way and keep going. Basically, when I go back to Europe, uh, I expect to uh, uh, reconnect with my family, with my friends, uh, with my former bosses, and I expect to uh, go back uh, to my uh, farming job, at least for some time, because that's also fun. Oh shit. They're shooting from down. From like down. Above. From down. Jesus. Like from close. Like the cane hitting metal. Really? Yeah. Anything. Jump. Yeah. Jump. Yeah, I'm back here.
There's still a lot of bodies under the rubble. You can smell it. There's a ton of flies. Probably the ones that are crawling over us right now, uh, five minutes ago, were <laughs> crawling on some dead guy. place where they crushed the guy with the tank? I um, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't think I've seen that video. I remember when Dai shot a video of uh, uh, back in the day, way back, I think it was 2015, where they were like uh, showing how great the caliphate is. You can see the Ferris wheel over there, children playing, eating ice cream. Look at this place now. Why do you do this? <laughs> You're destroying your masterpiece. <laughs> yeah. So are these were individual uh, cells for Daesh prisoners. Someone uh, scratched the uh, calendar here oh, on yeah. the wall. Yeah. Spent a long time here. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Also found this, this for the prisoners, for their eyes. I assume the people who were here probably got executed at some point. Yeah. I think that's written in blood. Blood, yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Man, I miss home. I miss it a lot. But at the same time, I know going back, I'm going to miss this too. You can feel it already. You take part in the war, like all that mundane bullshit goes away. The mundane bullshit you have in your everyday life, where you make your small problems big as you can, you make them into some huge monster. And here it's just, you don't care about that. Like, life is very simple. Like, it's gonna be difficult adjusting back to the civilian life. Today, Heval Shiar, one of our oldest comrades, is living. 
So, Evan Chiel, if you have anything to say before leaving Kelemke? I don't know. Oh, Kelemke. Just, uh, <laughs> thank you guys, I learned a lot from you, but I'm hoping seeing you like pretty soon and like here, there, and just like really take care. And I would like to say it's over for me for military, but I, I still don't feel like it. I, I don't know. <laughs> I will have to to see how it goes uh, for me because I really want to to stay with you guys. It's gonna be really uncomfortable for me all these these months, you know, just knowing that you are here, like still like preparing and fighting, and me and on the other side. So anyway, just take care. Thank you. I'm not gonna say who or something. <laughs> Or is it unmilitary? You know, <laughs> you gotta hug. You want to hug. You want to hug. <laughs> is it okay? Sorry, man. It's been an honor. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm going to go. 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 I'm y seguir de modo cruel contra el pueblo conspirando para seguirlo explotando y en eso llegó Fidel y se acabó la diversión llegó el comandante y mandó a parar y se acabó la diversión llegó el comandante y mandó a parar la revolución ici es complicada porque hay mucho de decepción Quand on vient, on a cette idée qui est plus romantique. Mais après, tu comprends, la société, elle est vraiment complexe ici. Je ne veux pas juste dire, ça y est, c'est passé, c'est fini. Je fais ma, ma petite bataille là, je suis un héros, je pars chez moi. Non, ça, c'est... ça, j'accepte pas. We're gonna do a festival that is gonna be big, like we're gonna have one day in Derek. Okay, okay, we'll do it. Good. Because just also for the, you know, Kobane, Srekani, Kamishlo, Derek. Avaldersen told, told us, like, do not put in many places, it will make our work so difficult, and I agree with him. Yeah, I agree with him too. I would prefer to do it in a mostly Arab place, sadly. It's so dangerous. Like, we go for the next day when the situation is more set. Well, je pourrais partir en Espagne ou en Europe et faire mes, tu vois, mes dé... grandir comme professionnel, comme cinéaste, comme n'importe quoi, et peut-être revenir avec plus d'options. Mais ouais, en même temps, je veux pas. Je veux grandir avec les Kurdes, travailler avec eux. Je veux qu'on grandisse ensemble et qu'on, que, ouais, qu je veux faire face à ces obstacles tous ensemble. I thought I was like, great. He's gonna he's gonna get branded as a terrorist, and then when he gets branded as a terrorist, I'm gonna get fired and lose my job because I can't have terrorists in my family. That was what I was worried about. But then that got spiraled out of control, and people all they heard was the word terrorist because it's a trigger word. Your sisters were calling him daily, and because they're like, he's as good as dead. And like your sisters were like, I don't know what they were dealing with, but they were talents were out. They were messed up. I just got mad at you. He. Yeah, he I wasn't was happy. I was fuming. I wanted to punch you so bad. Yeah, he wasn't very happy. I was mad. I was like, man, this dude decided to do this shit. I was like, I've already got enough stress at work. I just started working as a supervisor. Ugh. He covered his grief with anger. I did. I <laughs> took all my grief and I just mm. threw it in a pot of boiling, steaming hatred and anger. But I love you. Do you feel proud of what you've done? Mm, yeah. I mean, the United States don't even understand that you guys are the ones that actually well, took rap. I'm not, I'm not sitting there like, oh, look at me. I, I was fighting ISIS. I mean, uh, I didn't really go over to make a celebrity or anything. Well, I didn't say being well, a celebrity. <laughs> I mean, not being a celebrity, but 
You know, I mean, does well, it hurt that you know you didn't get recognized by our government? Well, I didn't go expecting to get recognized. I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to come back to the states. Feel more pressure now being home than you did when you was really over in Syria. I mean, here, like, no sense of mission. There's a revolution going on. I mean, you're, you're improving pe other people's lives. Here, it's like, okay, you, you're, you're, just, you're just a little worker bee for whoever you're working for. As you can see, I feel a little bit shiftless. There's nothing particularly intellectually stimulating about being a regular working class guy in Baltimore City. It's just dull. certainly has changed me. I'd like to think that it, you know, built me upward. To be, like, perfectly honest, it did cross my mind, too, that uh, it is a possibility. Now that I know, I mean, it would be easy to do again. But I think, like, also there's a, there's a side to human beings that uh, this, like, darker side of, like, fascination with violence, really. So, uh, being a, a war dog, going to fight in a conflict that I don't believe in or I don't feel is absolutely necessary, then I wouldn't do it, no. On tosiaan Platon tällainen tausta, tausta henkilö. Figure out a way that you can defend why you do your things, like, you know, why you conduct yourself in a certain manner. If you can defend that uh, well, you know, in, in a rational sense, then, then uh, you're on the right path, I think. I gave my life to help the people of Northern Syria. I've stopped terrorists before they came here and hurt people. I feel I've done quite a lot to like, stop terrorism, but my government's more interested in trying to get me charged with terrorism instead. So it's, like, it's heartbreaking. Like sometimes, uh, like when I tell my friends stories, they're like, "Oh, that's, you're just lying. I would have heard that on the news." Or would have, and I'm like, "All right, okay, that never happened." But like within the group, we know what happened, so it might not go down in history, but we can pass that to like our families, friends. So some people will know, but we've done our part. And if it doesn't get told in the history books, it doesn't matter because the city got saved. After coming back home, I couldn't sleep because my back hurt. But the problem about uh, psychological injuries is that I don't even know if they ever heal. It's something that you have to work on. It's something that you will maybe have to deal with the rest of your life. 
That's what I believe. Io uh, stavo perdendo la testa stanno qua. A fare un cazzo, eh? Uh, anche a fare lavori così che. Li combattiamoci ragazzi con lo sicuro davanti. Vai, 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 li combattiamo, vai, vai. Poi bisogna ah, cioè, ah, star seduto ah, dietro a un computer, che cazzo è sta merda? Sì, sì. Io sono stato un anno a dormire sotto le stelle, bellissimo, tornato qua, paff. Invece... No, in buca, io ero in buca proprio, la compagna mia mi diceva, cazzo, cioè che ho conosciuto... Super frizzante, sì. croccante, no, sembra... sono andato in buca. Se, sembrava un orso di <ride> <l'orso>? inverno <ride> nelle caverne, in, in ibernazione. I come back home and there is a far right party with a heavy agenda of racism and xenophobia on the government. And this is uh, very sad. And uh, I will fight it. Lottate contro le mafie, contro il razzismo, il fascismo, è uguale cosa. Perché non può esistere giustizia se non c'è uguaglianza. Bravo! Bravo! E oggi io sento che... As long as there are peaceful means to, to achieve political change, uh, I believe it should be pursued that way. So I'll be with the movements, I'll be in sit-ins and demonstrations, holding, uh, uh, you know, signs. And I will not feel one bit ashamed of that because maybe before I was holding a Kalashnikov or I was a commander or blah, blah, or this and that. I'll keep, you know, struggling. I'll keep, uh, I'll be just part of, uh, of a movement and I'll be content. Thank you.